Don't do the same mistakes as I did. My name is Carl and I have a background as a professional photographer. I will dispense five beginner mistakes that I have learned the hard way in the beginning of my career so that you don't have to do the same mistakes as I did. Look at this photo, everything is perfect. The light is perfect, a beautiful sunset on a perfect sky. I had booked two models. At the time I had access to a private jet, which definitely isn't something that I have access to every day. So it was a somewhat unusual opportunity for me to take some really cool photos. I had asked the pilot to taxi the plane in the perfect direction so I could use the whole aircraft as a giant reflector. So with the stage perfectly set, what could possibly go wrong from here? Ah! Oh no! Ah! I shot JPEG. I had all the right props, the right models, the right weather, the right light, but I had the wrong camera setting. I simply didn't know better and had deliberately set my camera to shoot JPEG. I thought that the quality trade-off wasn't that bad when I could get so many more photos on my memory card. Now, almost 20 years later, I never shoot JPEG. RAW files gives you so much more control, you can adjust the white balance, colors and contrast. And most important of all, you have no compression artifacts. A bonus tip is that I didn't pay attention to details. In this session I shot a lot with strobe, but like I told you with this specific photo I used the aircraft as a giant reflector, so I had disconnected all the strobes. But I accidentally left a cable on the ground, which is pretty simple to remove in post, but it's totally unnecessary and it shouldn't have been there in the first place. Lesson learned, pay attention to details. Aperture 1.4 does not mean 1.4 only. Okay, so you have bought this fast prime lens with a wide aperture. And now you want to take some photos with an isolated subject, a super short depth of field and ultra smooth bokeh. And that's totally understandable. If you buy your first prime lens with a wide aperture, it uh, might not make sense to not use its full potential and shoot it wide open all the time. It was an important insight for me to see how much better a photo can be if you step down the aperture. There are a few reasons for this. One is the technical quality of the photo. You will often improve the overall sharpness in your photo if you step down the aperture a few steps. This is Chalizou. We took many great photos during this session, but I will show you one specific photo where the depth of field is too shallow. This is a more or less unedited portrait shot with Canon 85mm at aperture 1.8 on a full frame camera. This gives a very short depth of field, but as you can see there is very little skin details and other information. The short depth of field is uh, very unforgiving. The focus seems to be on Shelly's mouth rather than on the eye. The focus is very little off, so you can fix this in post, but with Aperture 4 you would have more details already in focus. Once again, pay attention to details. If you can see already in the viewfinder that there are some stray hair in the model's back, you will have less work to do in Photoshop. The main reason though that you shouldn't shoot at the widest aperture all the time is the visual storytelling. The background and the environment can actually add something to your visual storytelling. This barbed wire looks uh, rough, but with the graffiti or writing on the wall, it looks even rougher. This gives you the full story. Photography is not just about creamy bokeh, photography is about telling a story. Maybe you have got a blurry picture like this and figure that the autofocus was failing. Many times you probably have motion blur in your photos. There are mainly two reasons why you get motion blur in your photos. You move your camera or your subject is moving. When you shoot handheld, use a shutter speed that is at least two times the focal length and never under 125. 
So even when you shoot, let's say 16 millimeter, it's important to never go under a shutter speed of 125. A common source for motion blur is camera shakes or camera rotation. Don't just pull the trigger in a fast way that will cause rotation blur. The concept is that you don't pull the trigger, but you squeeze it gently until you have taken a photo with no rotation blur at all. Other things you can do is to use a tripod or a monopod. You can rest it on your knee, you can lean against a wall, or you can create tension with your camera strap. When you take a photo, look at the histogram and if it's not correctly exposed, take a new photo immediately. Never trust your LCD screen, only the histogram. As you can see this photo looks overexposed, but according to the histogram it's a perfect exposure. If you want a dark moody picture, keep the histogram to the left and if you want a high key picture, keep your histogram to the right but never crop the histogram on either side. That means loss of information. Have you done this mistake? Let me know in the comments. Avoid over editing and excessive post-production. This picture says it all. This is Denise, a very professional model that I have hired for many different assignments. For most of those photos I made some minor tweaking in the post-production. I always color correct and crop my photos and even make some minor retouch. But in some of those photos I went over the top. Denise is a beautiful and vivid person, but I totally ruined this photo when I made her look plastic and artificial. Her personality is not coming through in the photos and her personality was the reason why I hired her as a model in the first place. Very counterproductive. Let me know in the comments what your worst photo mistake is and if you found this video helpful please give me a thumbs up that makes all the difference for me and being able to provide more videos like this.